Hello once again. I've got a really cool piece of vintage telephone equipment to show you guys today. This is a Panasonic Isophone model KX-T1520 automatic telephone answering system and it was made in 1980 or 81. This is a very early answering machine. I found this on eBay paid about sixty dollars for it and uh, I got it because for a long time I've been wanting to get a standalone Panasonic answering machine. Panasonic just because they're my favorite uh, maker of answering machines but I've been wanting something to replace my current answering machine which is actually the one built into the Panasonic fax machine that I did a video of last year I believe I've been using that as my answering machine on my landline, but I've really been wanting to replace it with something standalone. And so a couple of weeks back, I went on eBay, went looking at uh, standalone Panasonic answering machines. Thought I might get one of the ones from, you know, the late 80s, early 90s that looked like this. But then I found this guy and I could not, I just could not pass it up. <laughs> and so I bought it for a little higher than what my budget was. But it turned out to be totally worth it because this thing works perfectly. 40 years old. In fact, not only does this work perfectly, I didn't have to do anything to it. This thing worked perfect out of the box. The only thing I did was clean a ton of oxide crud off the pinch roller and pinch rollers and capstan. Plural because this actually uses two cassettes. This is a dual standard cassette answering machine. And that was the other thing I wanted. I wanted something Panasonic, but then I also wanted something that used dual standard cassettes. Because all the answering machines I've ever owned were either digital, which I no longer have, or micro cassette based. My Panasonic answering, uh, my Panasonic fax machine, that's, that uses a micro cassette, although the outgoing message is stored on digital memory. And then I've got my AT&T answering machine, which you guys hear whenever you call my, uh, my uh, public phone line, my second phone line, uh, that uses a single micro cassette. And they work just fine. But you make some concessions, both for having a micro cassette and for being a single cassette. Micro cassettes, obviously, not as high quality as a standard cassette. Uh, you get, you know, a lot more wow and flutter than you do with a standard cassette. But then the concession you make with an answering machine that uses a single cassette is that, at least in the case of most of them, but not my Panasonic, um, the outgoing messages, the outgoing message and the incoming messages are stored on the one cassette. So your outgoing message is recorded in the beginning and then your incoming messages are recorded after it. And usually that's a perfectly fine system, but if you happen to get a lot of messages, say you're away from home for a few days or whatever, and you get a lot of messages on your machine, well, now when people call in and it plays your outgoing message at the beginning of the tape, uh, it then has to fast forward uh, to a blank part of the tape, fast forward through all the existing incoming messages, and your caller has to sit there and wait for the beep. And in this day and age, that's probably not going to happen. They're probably just going to think something's wrong and then hang up. But I, So I wanted something that used dual standard cassettes. And just see what that was like and, uh, you know, what the quality difference is like, stuff like that. And oh boy, it's so good. This thing works so well. And the fidelity is miles above either of my micro cassette based answering machines. This thing is really cool. I believe, based on my research that I've done, I think this may have been Panasonic's first computer controlled answering machine. I can only find evidence of one answering machine that Panasonic made before this and it was only sold overseas uh, under the national name. Again, this is just based on what information I've been able to find and it was based on reel-to-reel -reel tape. But then in 1980, 
they came out with this guy, and this guy was actually a member of uh, uh, of a family of four answering machines that they sold in the early 80s. Uh, the base model, the KXT1510. Then there was this unit, the KXT1520, which added remote control capability, meaning that you actually got the machine with a little remote, and when you went uh, away from home, you could call home, and the machine would start playing, and you could press buttons on the remote control, hold it up to the telephone receiver, and the controller would make bleeping sounds that this thing could understand, and you could listen to your messages while you were away from home. I didn't get this thing with the remote. Then there was the KXT1525 and the KXT1530, which added more features still. But yeah, this was a very early answering machine. Even though it is computer controlled, it is primitive in a lot of ways. And we'll explore that throughout this video. First of all, this thing is just, well, it's huge, first of all. Second of all, it is enormously heavy. This probably weighs six, seven, eight pounds. It's insanely heavy. And I'm gonna call a spade a spade here. This thing looks like a VCR. I think they made this thing to look like the VCRs of the time. With the rotary dials, and the push buttons, and the wood grain mixed with the silver, and... That's just my guess. Speaking of wood grain, that's another thing. This thing has miles of wood grain, which is another reason why I just could not pass this up when I saw it on eBay. Look at this thing. Every surface except for the bottom has wood grain on it. It is covered in wood grain. This thing looks so cool. And it's a nice wood grain too. It's like a mahogany, I think. This thing just looks beautiful. It really, really does. But yeah, this thing works so well and uh, I can't wait to put it to use on my uh, main landline. So let's take a look at this thing. Your door flips up, granting you access to the two cassettes. Now, here's something kind of cool. First of all, this thing came with the original cassettes, which was really cool and another reason that uh, tipped the scale for me to buy this thing. Not just because it's cool to have the original cassettes, but you actually do kind of need one of the cassettes, which I'll get to in a couple of minutes. Your incoming messages are recorded on a standard cassette. Cassettes just pull out like this. It's a standard C60 cassette. Made in Japan. And supposedly the tape used in both of these cassettes is a little bit thicker and sturdier than that used in an audio grade cassette and that's to make them more durable, more long-lasting in a potentially uh, harsh environment. If you are getting a lot of messages, then the tape's going to be moving a lot and being rewound a lot and stuff like that. And then your outgoing message is recorded on this cassette, and you may be able to tell already this is not an ordinary cassette. This answering machine, and in fact, uh, a lot of Panasonic's early answering machines used an endless loop cassette. This cassette is built much like an 8-track cartridge or a Fidelipak cartridge. It's an endless loop and the tape exits uh, through that little slit right there. Goes around. This is just a dummy reel. Goes around and then comes back in. It's an endless loop and it's 20 seconds long. And if you look right here, this thing can't even accept a uh, standard cassette. That little plastic post right there blocks you from being able to insert either the endless loop cassette upside down. See that post is too thick. And it prevents you from using a standard cassette. So that was one of the things that made this primitive, was the use of an endless loop cassette. Because, uh, this thing does not allow you to record a custom length outgoing message. 
this thing knows when the endless loop tape has reached, has made a loop, because you might see if I can get you a focus. You might be able to see a strip of metal foil right there. And that metal foil bridges a set of electrical contacts, which are right there. And that tells the machine that the tape is looped. And that's the only mechanism by which the machine starts and stops recording when you record your outgoing message. When you start recording your outgoing message, you have to record the entire length of the tape until that metal foil bridges those contacts and then the machine stops. You cannot, you know, say your message and then hit stop. Doesn't work like that. Which I did not know <laughs> until I started using this thing. Um, yeah, this cassette's 20 seconds long. You have to use that whole 20 seconds, which is a little bit awkward and actually slightly problematic for me because uh, my outgoing message that I've always used is not 20 seconds long. Uh, it's more like 10 seconds long. But I'm going to have to figure something out because uh, I can't just use my usual outgoing message and then have 10 seconds of blank space. People are going to wonder what's wrong and just hang up. You can buy these uh, cassettes. Panasonic weren't the only uh, ones to use these. You can buy these endless loop cassettes in, I've seen them in 15, 20, and 30 second uh, varieties. So I'm hoping I can get my hands on a 15 second tape, and then that'll make it a bit easier for me to put this thing into service with my outgoing message. Now the higher end uh, versions of this machine, the KXT1525 and the KXT1530, they actually used an ordinary cassette for the outgoing message as well. So they use two ordinary cassettes and your outgoing message could be as short or as long as you want, which is nice. But this thing doesn't give you that luxury. So I'll have to see if I can invest in a 15 second cassette. If you go on eBay and search endless loop cassettes, you can find people who make them, but they're for the music market not for answering machines. They do not have that metal sensing foil which you need. Otherwise this thing would just play the outgoing message over and over forever without ever actually beginning to record the incoming message. So that's the whole story with that. But yeah, the two original cassettes I got with this thing, that was pretty cool. You'll see a lot of, uh, Panasonic kept making answering machines that use an endless loop cassette, at least into the late 80s. And you see a lot of them for sale on eBay, and they don't have the cassettes with them. Uh, which makes them very much worthless, because if you don't have the endless loop cassette, you can't really make use of one of these, unless you go on eBay and spend another 20 bucks for an endless loop cassette. That's an erase button right there. You hold that down while either of the cassettes are playing. And as the cassettes play, it erases the message. Funny story, when I got this thing, the eBay description, the guy actually said, the cassettes have been erased. Nope, they weren't. <laughs> Both the cassettes were perfectly intact when, uh, when I got this thing. And... Uh, all, all the original stuff was on there. Uh, there was a lot of messages on the uh, incoming message tape, which I did archive. I don't know if they'd be of any interest to anybody, nor do I know if there's any... Uh, I, I, I don't know what the ethical ram ramifications are to uh, publicizing vintage answering machine recordings. But just in case I ever do, I did save the original recordings on this tape. But yeah, the guy did not erase the cassettes. Um, my guess is he thought he could just hit rewind or fast forward and hold the button down. Nope, doesn't work. It only works when you're in play mode. Speaking of the uh, transport controls, here they are. Another thing that sort of sets this apart from newer answering machines, you have a full set of transport controls here, which is how you control playing back your messages and stuff. 
But, uh, yeah, you know, modern answer machines, they'll have buttons for, like, oh, play new messages, or play all messages, or rewind, or stuff like that. But this thing, it's like a cassette deck. You've got play, rewind, fast forward, which also serve as a cue and review. Stop, record, you have to hold record and play to, like, record your OGM. And then a mechanical pause switch. So kind of primitive in that manner. And indeed, this thing, uh, this thing does not save incoming messages. Once you've listened to your messages and you put the machine back into standby mode, it rewinds the cassette all the way to the beginning. So if you want to save your messages after you've listened to them, you've got to either change out the cassette or flip it around. Which, I'm not really sure why they did that. They could have just as easily not rewound the cassette when you put it into uh, standby mode. Answer set mode, it's called. They could have just not rewound the tape and made you manually rewind it if you wanted to. But no, they chose to make it automatic. The higher end models of this uh, actually did have the ability to save messages if you wanted to. But yeah, there's your transport controls, and of course you'll see these in use throughout the video. Your rotary knobs here, the one on the left is your volume and your on-off switch. I'll actually turn it on. And now it's on. Power indicator lights up. And when you turn it on after it's been turned off in the answer set mode, your calls light does not light up. Normally when you're in the answer set mode, this light right here is lit up to let you know the machine is ready to answer the line. But even though it's not lit up right now, this thing is ready to answer the line. Just kind of a quirk that it has. But as you can see, you have a lot of modes on here. So the answer set mode is your normal mode. The machine is ready to accept calls. You also have an answer play mode. So if you get messages, you turn it into answer play mode. You hit. Re you have to manually hit rewind to rewind the tape and then play to play your messages. And then you have OGM1 and OGM2. So you can actually record two outgoing messages on this thing. OGM1 is what normally plays. OGM2 plays if the incoming message cassette is full. If, uh, if, you, if it's reached the end of the cassette, it will automatically answer with OGM2 instead of OGM1. And so OGM2 is where you record a message saying that the tape is full and your message will not be recorded. Please call again later or something like that. But then you've got some other party tricks that this thing can do. It does do two-way telephone call recording, which is nice. That's a feature I have used a couple of times before. Here in Canada, it's one-party consent, meaning if you're on the phone with somebody, you can just hit record. You don't have to tell them, because you count as one party. You're one party to the conversation. So I have used two-way recording a couple of times for some important calls, just because Sometimes, you know, when something's important going on, I can, uh, <laughs> I can forget what I was told just as soon as it was told to me. So it's come really handy sometimes. But this thing does something kind of annoying. When uh, you do a two-way recording, it beeps on the line every 15 seconds. So everybody knows that you're recording whether you tell them or not, which kind of sucks. So if I use a two-way recording on this... I'm gonna have to tell the other party, or ask the other party if I can record, which kind of sucks. Beep every 15 seconds. Ah, that sucks. The newer ones don't do that. Oh well. Maybe it was law at the time that uh, a two-way recording had to have a periodic notification to both parties or something. I don't know. Then you have finally a dictate mode, which basically turns this thing into a cassette voice recorder. Of course, it has a built-in condenser microphone right there, which you use to record your outgoing messages. But it, if you want to, you can just use it as a voice recorder. Just hit record and start talking. There's other controls on this too. You have actually a headphone jack, which is kind of neat if you wanted to listen to your messages in private. You can switch 
how long uh, your uh, callers have to record. Vox mode means the machine records as basically as long as the person keeps talking, which is a setting you would normally have it on. Or you can limit your caller's messages to 30 seconds. The machine will record for 30 seconds and then it'll hang up. And I suppose if back in the day you were on a line that you were charged for incoming calls and you wanted to be miserly about your bill, you could set it to that. You set it to off and it plays OGM2 and then it hangs up. And then you actually have an analog dial here to choose uh, how many rings before it answers. It's pretty much, it pretty much goes between like half a ring and five rings or something like that. And then on the back, you've got the power cord. This thing plugs straight into AC power. It does not use a power supply. I just realized this has a uh, has a little damage on it. That's the first damage I've seen on this. This thing is in impeccable shape. Didn't notice that until now. Oh well. But yeah, it uh, plugs straight into the uh, AC power. The power supply is built into the unit. And the telephone cord is hardwired, which wasn't too uncommon back in the day when this machine was made. And then you've got a extension jack to plug a telephone into it. And then of course you get the sticker, which uh, it was law at the time that anything wood grain had to uh, have this message either printed on it or as a sticker. I guess because people somehow might think that this thing was actually made out of mahogany. <laughs> But uh, there you go, that's all the controls on this thing. Let's see it work. I've recorded two OGMs on this thing. Uh, I've recorded them as if this was hooked up to my second telephone line. But let's listen to them. So we'll listen to OGM1 first. I'll lift the cover so you can see the tape move, although you won't actually see anything move on this endless loop tape. The reels are just passive, pretty much. And uh... All we do is hit play. Turn our volume up. Thank you for calling the Maritime Girls Fax and Message Line. You are talking to a Panasonic KXT1520 automatic telephone answering system from 1980. If you would like to leave a message on this 40-year-old answering machine, you may do so after the beep. And there you go. And uh, yeah, as you can see, there was quite a few seconds of uh, quiet before it actually quit playing just because my outgoing message wasn't that long. Uh, it I wasn't long enough to fill the whole 20 seconds. That was sort of a concession you have to make when you use this thing. OGM2 is the same deal. Maritime Girls Fax and Message Line. I receive so many messages that the tape is full and the answering machine cannot record any more messages at the moment. Please let me know via Twitter or another social media so that I may flip over the tape and continue recording messages. There you go. Of course, you can hear classic Panasonic answering machine beep. That's why I love these things. It's a classic sound to me. Let's go into dictate mode. Let's uh, let's record a little dictation. Uh, we go into dictate mode. Our incoming message tape is already rewound. And I just hit record and play. And now we are recording a dictation on the Panasonic KXT1520 answering machine from 1980 or 81 using the built-in microphone. And if we want to play it back, we can rewind. It does auto stop. And hit play. On the Panasonic KXT1520 answering machine from 1980 or 81 using the built-in microphone. 
and then it, it'll actually just keep playing uh, after you stop so it'll start playing any messages that are on there uh, okay we've seen these things we've seen what this thing can do that's not actually related to answering a telephone call let's make it actually answer a telephone call let's put it into answer set mode so it automatically rewinds the incoming message cassette brings it ahead a little bit to get it past the leader and then our light comes on to show that this thing's ready so let me actually plug in a telephone uh, just so we can hear the line ring when I make the call and then we'll see how it works all right I've got old reliable plugged into the uh, telephone port on the machine I'm just gonna call my line here turn the volume down Or actually, I'll Thank you for calling there we the are. Maritime Girls Fax and Message Line. You are talking to a Panasonic KX. Hmm? Automatic telephone answering system from 1980. If you would like to leave a message on this 40-year-old answering machine, you may do so after the beep. And I'm now recording a message onto the machine. The incoming message tape is moving, machine is recording, and now I will end my telephone call. Goodbye. And see the machine actually records a beep onto the cassette. We kind of missed that there, but we can hear it when we play it back. And you can see the calls light is actually blinking now. And it does blink uh, a number of times depending on the number of messages you get, which is nice. I don't know what the maximum is. But now, I come home, I see there's a message, I want to play my message. So we'll go into answer play mode. We'll rewind. And we'll play my message. This thing is really good f fidelity. Like that is so much better than my micro cassette answering machines. There's no significant wow or flutter. And it sounds really, really good. Uh, it sounds amazing. And this thing's 40 years old. Like I would not fault it at all for having worn belts, bad capacitors, bad pinch roller or warm pinch roller but it doesn't have any of that this thing still works beautifully it performs exceptionally well 40 years on I can't believe it I, it's, it's amazing to me so I really lucked out with this thing it, it really was worth every penny I paid for it and that seems to be the case with most of these there's videos there's a few videos of these on YouTube already and they all work. All of those videos show the machine working just fine. So Panasonic really just built the crap out of these things. Which, I mean, no doubt, considering how much it weighs. But yeah, super amazing. How about we test two-way recording? To do that, I'll call the line. And I'll pick it up this time. Put on speakerphone here. And now we're on the line. 
bit of an echo there. Uh, and now we'll start the recording. And you'll hear every 15 seconds. Which kind of stinks. But I guess it was there for a reason at the time. So we'll hang up. And the machine should stop recording here, I would think. Or is it not smart enough to? I guess it's going to keep on recording. And now it's recording a dial tone. Okay. And we play that back by going into answer play. Or actually, we might be able to just leave it on two way. Yeah. So yeah, you can't, you cannot uh, stealthily record calls with this thing, but I guess you can't win them all. Now another neat thing you can do is because the machine uses standard cassettes, you can actually use a standard cassette deck not only to play back the incoming messages, but you can actually use a cassette deck uh, with the aid of some digital technology to record your outgoing messages. Stick our incoming message tape in. And the messages are actually recorded on the right channel with the beeps on the left channel. The incoming message tape is moving. Machine is recording. And now I will end my telephone call. Goodbye. Now the uh, outgoing messages are recorded in kind of an interesting fashion. Uh, OGM1 is recorded in the left channel, while OGM2 is recorded on the right channel. And it uses a, the outgoing message cassette deck only uses a standard cassette head, so only half the tape actually ever gets used. The other half, the so-called B-side, uh, just goes to waste. And so, uh, it just switches between the left and right channels when switching between OGM1 and OGM2. The Maritime Girls Fax and Message Line. I receive so many messages, messages that the tape is full and the answering machine cannot record any more messages at the moment. System. Please let me know via Twitter or another social media so that I may flip over the tape and continue recording messages through the beat. And it just repeats forever after that because it's an endless loop. Now, if you're a keener, as we say in the Maritimes, if you notice that both of my outgoing messages uh, started off with the identical, with an identical uh, sentence that you couldn't even tell the two channels apart, that's because I indeed recorded my two OGMs externally. I recorded each OGM separately using the Olympus LS7. I then used my video editor to assemble the two OGMs. 
onto the same track, one in the left channel, one in the right channel, playing simultaneously. Rendered it out, played it into the uh, cassette deck, and recorded it onto the tape. Um, I didn't mention, but of course, a uh, normal cassette deck has no problem playing this endless loop tape. And uh, yeah, it's easy as that, and you get a bit better fidelity for doing it. Um, it does lack a bit in the high end when it's going over the telephone line. Um, so I may redo that uh, when I... Of course, I'll be putting this thing into use on my main line, so I won't be using those uh, recordings I made for the second telephone line. But when I do record my normal OGM for the main line, I might try boosting the high end a little bit, see if that helps. Now, a full page magazine ad seems like the last thing that you would do for an answering machine, but you gotta remember, this was really early days for answering machines. Uh, the first practical machines came out in the 1960s, but it really wasn't until the late 70s, early 80s, when they became, you know, high performance enough, easy enough to use, and affordable enough for the average person. And so when Panasonic came out with this line of machines, they did make a full page magazine ad. Only the Panasonic telephone answering machine can do this. Tell your caller the message tape is full so you don't lose any of your calls. Give a three-function remote control so you can find your important calls quickly. All telephone answering machines can answer the phone up to a point, and that point is when their tape is full. When that happens and someone calls, either the machine just doesn't answer, or even worse, it tells the caller to leave a message and then doesn't record it, which means the caller thinks he's left you a message, but you don't have it. The new Panasonic EZAPhone answering system with remote control solves this problem because when its tape is full and someone calls, it automatically switches to a second pre-recorded message. A message that tells the caller he isn't being recorded now, so please call back later. And when you're away from your home and you want to get your messages, the Panasonic EZAPhone answering system gives you full control with a three-function remote control. And that gives you many advantages. First, the Panasonic system will answer your call and play back your messages even when the message tape is full. Most other machines won't. Then, you can either skip ahead message by message to really important calls, or you can skip back message by message to repeat important calls. And of course, you can rewind to the front of the tape. But there are even more advantages. Instead of the usual 10 to 12 second gap between messages that other machines have, Panasonic narrows the gap to 8 seconds or less. You can also set the Panasonic to receive messages for 30 seconds or to a voice activated mode that records as long as there's tape. There's two party record with beep tone for, and for easy installation there's a built in modular jack that fits most phones. The Panasonic EZAPhone answering systems are part of a line that includes speaker phones and automatic dialers. This year it's a line that's going to be very, very busy. And then in the fine print there it says it may be necessary for the phone company to install a modular jack. All models are registered with the FCC. Cabinetry is simulated wood. And that was in December 1980. And it's also important to remember, this was before the bell system broke up. Uh, this thing existed before then. And so back before the bell system broke up, if you wanted to buy a piece of equipment like this, you had to call your local AT&T office, let them know that you wanted to buy an answering machine, and you had to get permission from them. You had to not only get permission from them to buy it and plug it into your telephone line, but they might make you invite one of their servicemen in for them to do it themselves so that they knew it was done right. Dark times, dark times indeed. Uh, things became much more lax and open to that kind of thing once the bell system broke up in 1984. And that is about all there is to show of the Panasonic EZAPhone KX-T1520 answering machine from 1980 or 81. Uh, I really love this thing. I think I really scored with this. Uh, it's absolutely beautiful, works perfect, really good fidelity given its age and the fact that it uses cassettes and everything else. 
this thing's just a treat. It's wonderful. I love this and I cannot wait to put it to use on my personal telephone line. But your guys' interaction with this thing doesn't have to end with this video. For if you're still watching after all this time, I got something a little special for you. For the next week, the next seven days after I upload this video, this will be connected to my second telephone line, my public telephone line, and I invite anybody who wants to experience a 40-year-old answering machine to call my second telephone line for the next seven days and leave a message. Whatever you want, it's, it's totally up to you. So uh, if you want to have a little fun with this thing, give it some exercise and do that then uh, I invite anybody to do that. I would really love to see this thing uh, get some messages from some of my viewers. All the information is up on the screen. And uh, yeah, if you feel like doing that, have fun. And then seven days from now, from when I upload this video, I'll be disconnecting this thing and uh, plugging it into my main telephone line. And that is why I recorded outgoing messages uh, pertinent to my second telephone line, not my main telephone line. But that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed looking at a really neat piece of history. Seeing how it works and, uh, and everything. I think this thing is really cool. And uh, I gotta give a big shout out to my Patreon supporters. These fine folk right here who actually helped pay for this thing. Um, literally, of course, uh, anything, all the donations from Patreon go into my PayPal account. And when I buy something on eBay, PayPal is the primary method of payment. So they literally helped pay for this thing. Also, the Patreon folks actually got a bit of a head start with this thing. This thing has already been plugged into my second telephone line. And uh, I secretly gave them a head start, and a few of them called in and left some messages on this thing. Uh, also, the Patreon folk got an exclusive video of me unboxing this thing the day it came in the mail. I taped myself unboxing it and testing it for the first time, and I uploaded that as my first Patreon exclusive video. So there's another perk to consider if you think these videos are worth a dollar a month or more. But there you go. For everybody watching, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And I will see you next time.